Hi everyone, Richard here from Electric Bike Report in the UK. Today I'm bringing you a review of the e-scoot Wayfarer. This is a budget city electric bike uh, and the company e-scoot is not one I've heard of before so it uh, will be interesting to see exactly what they've come up with. One of the main things that stood out initially for that budget price of 899 which is a really good price on the UK market is this lovely looking frame integrated battery a good size at 360 watt hours especially when you consider that price is is one of the best prices you'll find on the UK market it's uh, clearly designed just for easy city use got a lovely low step over frame and I noticed it looks very convenient for picking the bike up by the top by this lowered top tube here uh, which you might want to do once you're off it to take it up steps into a flat not particularly light bike at 23.4 kilos 55 pounds so that could be a very handy feature also lovely comfortable looking saddle adjustable stem you can get the bars reasonably upright again nice features on a city electric bike and this very strong looking rear rack so so far so good with the uh, the basic design and what about the spec the particular parts it's probably no surprise you get a bar fang rear hub motor um, very well respected name and if uh, all the other control electronics are set up correctly that should be a good solid performer you also have uh, these nice SIS seven speed shifters I've used before which look a good choice together with a, a Shimano Tawny rear derailleur there <coughs> It's an EU UK spec bike, which means it's a pedelec. You have to pedal to get the power. There's no um, throttle fitted. And there's a, a crank motion sensor on the non-drive side here. Very discreet, you barely notice it. But when you pedal, that will accelerate you up to uh, your 15 and a half mile an hour cutout speed. Um, so no torque sensor. You have to keep the pedal spinning to get it moving. You can fit a throttle. There is a throttle fitting cable here and uh, e-scoot provide one with the bike but you must make sure obviously if you fit that and you go on public highways that you accord with local laws so that's not an EU UK spec hence it's not fitted. The other thing that really stands out I was really impressed with, impressed with just at uh, a first take on this bike is just the number of features you get on it. A really strong rear rack, hardwired front and rear LEDs hardwired into the light, uh, into the battery. Sorry, so you've always got light at the touch of a button whenever you want it. You've got front suspension, nice big 28 inch tyres, pretty full length fenders, and of course a kickstand. So all in all, on paper, it looks brilliant value. So let's see how it does in the riding. The Wayfarer is quite a large bike, it comes in one size which I measured at 18 inches. It also has a lower top tube, meaning it's quite easy to get on and off for someone like me with a 5 foot 8 inch frame. As you can see from the riding position here, uh, it's about right for my height, slightly leant forward but still comfortable. Smaller riders would have to lean forwards more and very small riders might even struggle to get on and off the bike. But for average Chalada size riders it's very comfortable and stable ride. It will take sharp corners at moderate speed, whether descending or climbing. The large 28 by 1.75 inch tyres give you plenty of confidence in manoeuvring at speed and in traffic too. The semi-slicks roll along nicely and speedily. The large diameter wheels mean stability through turns and at speed, even one-handed while signalling. I also felt the slightly upright riding position helps to see what's around you, very important in busy traffic. The Wayfarer's Barfang rear hub motor isn't the most powerful on paper with 32 Nm of torque. 
However, it found this extended hill really easy, and on our standard three-quarter mile long hill climb, the Wayfarer managed a moderate 5% average gradient at 15 miles an hour, not much slower than the best mid-drives out there. Compared to a popular but much more expensive top-end motor like Bosch's Performance Line CX, which claims 85 newton meters of maximum torque, you might expect there to be a yawning gap in hill climbing ability. But perhaps surprisingly, this steep cycle path, around 15% at its steepest, didn't present any real challenges for the Wayfarer. The Bosch Performance Line would sail up, but the Wayfarer didn't find it too much of a challenge either. This is just a quick demonstration up this fairly steep hill of the three power level settings. So I've got the uh, E Wayfarer set to. If we start from level one, that's set at about 40 or 45 percent, I think. It gets you up to about seven mile an hour. If we toggle through the display at the bottom it's putting out about 160 watts not a lot more change it to level two you immediately feel a bigger pull you're up to about 75 percent of the motor assistance now taking you up to 10 12 mile an hour that's a very easy pull hardly out of breath at that and then level three 95 percent you get an extra boost again a fairly easy climb at 14 to 15 miles an hour after initially being disappointed with the braking power i found the mechanical disc brakes did bed in and improve a lot especially the front brake as you can see, there's plenty of close control on steep hills and you can even do rapid stops. As you can see, without a lockout on the front brake, you get quite a lot of dive going steeply downhill when you apply the brakes strongly. That dissipates your energy down into the forks rather than stopping you a bit quicker. So it would be nice to have a lockout feature on the forks here, maybe on a future model. You can see the dive effect on the soft front suspension here more closely as I stop and start quickly. The Wayfair has an array of four powerful LEDs at the front which are excellent as daytime run running lights if you keep them switched on. As you see here, they're perfectly visible in shady conditions and also in full sunlight. At night, even on unlit roads or in tunnels and underpasses, front LEDs are more than adequate for allowing you to see where you are going and I found them a brilliant safety feature. The rear light's less powerful than the front and can't always be seen as a daytime running light, but it's more than adequate for the dark. We're just going to take a look now at another really good feature of the Wayfair, this good strong pannier rack on the rear. And what I particularly like about this one, as well as the uh, large capacity rating, 25 kilos or around 55 pounds, uh, is the fact it's got side bars here for mounting your panniers slightly lower down, leaving the top of the rack free for um, a rack top bag or anything else you want to put on there. Uh, so you could fit a really big 
shop on here or equivalent load it'll also take these newer style axiom panniers with larger hooks which hook over the 13mm side bars and uh, on the pannier rack there's even a uh, attachment point for these uh, hooks at the bottom tensioning hooks which keep it tensioned and nicely firmly on the rack whilst you're going round corners so exactly what you want on a city bike really good capable strong rack I also like the fact it's uh, got an integrated rear light here at the back so you don't have to worry about where to attach your rear light or obscuring a rear light on the seat post with a load on the top of the rack we're just going to take a quick look now at the uh, display on the Wayfarer and these control buttons here these are two completely separate items first of all you have your uh, horn control here which is an electronic horn and you have a separate toggle switch for your front and rear lights which is completely separate to your display and just turn the display on as usual by pressing that button as you can hear you have quite a noticeable loud electronic light the best thing about this display other than that it's a big nice clear display is that you can set the uh, various background settings I'll just point out a couple of the most useful there's a, a kind of a couple of levels a couple of layers of different background settings if you press the plus and the minus we get to the first level uh, this is your trip counter but perhaps more usefully I found is a backlight setting for when you're in low light or at night you can turn the brightness of the backlight up and down you probably can't see it in this light in daylight but I've got it set on the strongest setting for level 3 there secondly if we're going to the second level of settings by pressing the plus and minus again we get quite a number of background settings as I toggle through there you maybe see we've got eight different settings the most useful I found was number two uh, this lets you set the uh, number of power levels for the power assistance so if I go into that setting I've actually got it set on just three settings and in each of those three settings you can just dial in the level of assistance you want so 3145 means in the first level of the, the three settings I have 45% assistance the motor will turn at probably 45% of the max speed it'll get 45% of the power and you simply press plus or minus to dial this last figure up and down so we'll leave that at 45 I found it worked well for me with the second setting on 75% and if I ever needed the full power of the motor occasionally uh, to get up steep hills or just for that extra mile or two uh, mile per hour to give you the top speed the very top assistance I've set it at 95 if you want more uh, power levels if you want to be able to dial up and down the power uh, with smaller gradations you can go up from uh, three levels of power uh, it gives you the options of five seven and nine but these cover the same range of power you'll be getting uh, equally small amount of power in the bottom setting and the top according to how you set it doesn't give you any more power by dialing in nine it just gives you a bit more subtle control uh, I just found I didn't need that I was spending a lot of time dialing up and down the power levels um, when I didn't I just didn't need to just a quick press up and down for three levels was perfect for me <clears throat> another highlight of the Wayfarer for me was this fully frame integrated 360 watt hour battery it just stood out because of the high quality uh, the high build quality of the battery itself and the way it's integrated into the frame uh, it locks into the frame you get a key to take it out so you can leave it in securely if you want to park the bike and leave it with the battery in 
or if you want to take it out for charging or just for security to take it with you you just put the key in, turn it, it flips out it's still actually locked in just as a kind of a, a double safety feature you have to unlock it there as well and then it comes out it's about 2.65 kilograms in weight that's about just under six pounds so pound for pound I think it's a little bit heavier than a Bosch battery but it's still quite easy to take around with you reasonably portable and uh, reasonably light uh, it's a lovely solid alloy case it looks really really robust uh, mechanically speaking the connections the lock the casing itself it's just one of the best I've seen I would say probably on a par with the construction that Bosch uses uh, so with batteries being one of the most expensive uh, replaceables that you you will likely have to replace especially if you've used your e-bike for a number of years uh, it's, it's really good to have something that uh, feels so solidly built it's equally solid and easy to get it back in the frame just make sure your electrical connections are in at the bottom and it goes back in with a nice reassuring clunk uh, another nice feature you get a spare key as well in case you lose one there's also on the top here a quick capacity check if you keep that light down for a while you get either a blue a green or a red light to show you the approximate state of charge of the battery again that's really useful uh, particularly for when it's off the bike you can just check it to see if it needs a quick top-up so overall this is one feature I'm really really impressed with on the Wayfarer so in summary what can we say about the e-scoot Wayfarer in short it's a bike that gives you a lot of bang for your buck we found it was a really good value bike the only downside really looking at the overall spec is this long reach from the saddle to the bars much smaller riders might just struggle a little to ride it comfortably even with this adjustable stem uh, adjusted, adjusted as far up as it'll go of course it's a bit less sophisticated ride quality uh, being a, a pedal, pedal assist uh, motion sensor system contrasted to a, a mid drive torque sensing system but they're going to cost you a, at least a few hundred pounds more at 899 this is just a fantastic value for a good a good quality well put together Barfang rear hub motor system it does really what a lot of pricier similar spec to e-bikes will do um, really good hill climber good capacity 360 watt hour battery to get a good um, 30 plus mile range which is what we achieved the spec itself there's no real weaknesses good powerful motor for hill climbing uh, a reasonable range of gears from the seven speed Shimano system that work faultlessly um, so overall I felt it was just a very well made very well spec e-bike the only slight weaknesses really were the front fork which lacked a lockout and we've gone into detail in that in the video and initially we got a rather uh, weak braking effect especially from the back brake but they do seem to be bedding in a lot now and uh, the, the brakes are, are pretty much up to speed after uh, just a few tens of miles of riding they started to bed in uh, and, and now they're much more effective so in short I'm struggling to think of any downsides to the bike e-scoot have done a really good job specking and manufacturing it it's available direct from e-scoot by their website and there on the website there's a detailed guarantee two years on the battery and two years on the motor uh, they also go into great detail on the uh, guarantee for all the other particular parts so thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it please just click to, to subscribe below and hope to see you next time Thank you.